The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to explain family limited partnerships and irrevocable trusts. Both family limited partnerships and irrevocable trusts are ways for people to protect their assets from creditors or people they owe money to. Um, so for, for people that are in a high likelihood of being sued professions like that, you know, doctors, uh, this is often a great way to make sure that their assets are protected from people who may wrongfully sue them in the future. Uh, it's also great for business owners who transact a lot of business and incur a lot of liability. Insurance is the most important way to protect yourself from financial ruin based on creditors, but this is something that a lot of people ask about in their estate plan. So let's talk about how family limited partnerships work, how irrevocable trusts work, and what the difference is between the two. So irrevocable trusts are a little bit more common than family limited partnerships. Irrevocable trusts are basically a way to transfer property, usually real estate, into ownership by a trust. Uh, and what's usually done here is it gives, it, this is often done in families, uh, the parent has the lifetime right to live in the property. So the, they have the right to live in the property for the rest of their lives, but they give up the authority to sell the property to somebody else without the authority of the child or whoever the beneficiary is that they name in the revocable trust. The child has no right to possess the property during the parent's lifetime, but they have the right to inherit it when the parent passes away. What makes this different from a normal will or trust that just names the child as the, the heir uh, and, and says, you know, I want to give this property to my child, is that it's irrevocable. So basically, uh, the, the parent is saying the child has a present interest, a current present interest that's already vested in inheriting this property. And what that does is it divides up the property rights in the property so that it's not just the parent that owns all of the property rights in the child, there are parts of the property that are parts of, parts of the bundle of property rights that are actually owned by the child, and that is the right to inherit the property in the future. And it takes away the parent's right to give, the, give that right to somebody else or to dispose of the property during the parent's lifetime. And what this does is it prevents creditors also from foreclosing on the property, selling it during the parent's lifetime, uh, because even though the parent may owe them money and normally they'd be able to foreclose on the property and sell it for the benefit of paying off their, their debt, because the parent is the only, the parent only now has a lifetime interest to live in the property. They don't have the power to sell it anymore. The creditors can't get to that property. What they can do is put a charging order on the property so that if the uh, parent were to make any money off of rent for the property, it would first have to go to the creditors um, as opposed to being paid to the parent or the child. Um, so they, they can basically get the right to get any income off the, of the property during the parent's lifetime, but if the parent passes away and the debt is still active, then that property is going to transfer immediately to the child without the debt ever having to be paid off through the property. So that's how irrevocable, irrevocable trusts work. Family limited partnerships are similar. Uh, just like with an irrevocable trust where you transfer ownership of the property to the trust, in a family limited partnership you transfer uh, ownership of the property to a, a business and it's, it's a limited partnership but it's owned by family members. And the way a limited partnership works is the owners are divided into limited partners and general partners. General partners have the exclusive right to control the going-ons of the partnership. Limited partners have uh, basically a right to any profits from uh, sale or, or ongoing profit disbursements in the partnership. So what people will do in the family context uh, in order to protect a, a piece of property is they will tra transfer it to a family limited partnership, make the parents general partners with a 98% share in the property and the children limited partners with a 2% share in the property. Now the downside to this, just like irrevocable trust, is you're giving up you know, some right to uh, proceeds of the property if the property is sold. Unlike an irrevocable trust, the general partners 
will retain the, the power to sell the property during their lifetimes. Um, without the consent of the children, theoretically the children are entitled to a percentage of the proceeds of that sale equal to the percentage of the their ownership of the limited partnership. But because they're limited partners, they don't have any any control over the way the property is set up. So it's a little bit, a lot of people like family limited partnerships better than revocable living trusts because you maintain you, you maintain the control over uh, the, the property during your lifetime as a parent as with revocable living trusts, you, you don't have the power to sell the property anymore. Now, a couple things I wanna, now that we've talked about kind of the distinction between family limited partnerships and irrevocable trust, let's talk about some general principles that apply to both. One is that the power you're giving up is somewhat illusory because if you get the ch child's signature uh, on any sale documents and you get them to approve the sale, even in an irrevocable trust, you can sell the property during, the, during your lifetime. You just have to get their authority to do so. Same with the family limited partnership. If you don't want to give profits of a sale or profits from rents to, uh, to the child, then you just need them to sign off on that in real time. But you're still, you know, there's still a risk that if there's a family dispute, you're going to be in a bad situation. Um, just like with irrevocable trusts, in a family limited partnership, the creditors can put a charging order on any real estate that basically entitles them to the first disbursements for any profits made off the real estate, rents or anything like that. So you can't pay yourself out for rent without paying the creditor first. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is that the reason this is unpalatable to a lot of people is that the more control you actually give up in real life here, the more likely it is to hold up as a defense against creditors. So if you create a kind of a sham revocable trust or a sham family limited partnership where you're really not giving up much, much if any, control, you know, your minor children are the limited partners and you're the one signing off on everything for them, you, you may be in a situation where that won't hold up in court. Of course, we'll look at this as a case, on a case-by-case -case basis. And the rule of thumb is on the spectrum of how much did you actually give up to create this entity? How much control did you give up? The more control you gave up, the more you actually had to sacrifice to make this, the more likely it is to hold up in court. So if you have any questions, please leave them in our comments section. Uh, please subscribe to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube, and feel free to call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.